In this demonstration, I'll show you how to use a standard laboratory microscope. I'll start by guiding you through the different optical components. In white, you see the microscope stand, which holds together all the optical components. And inside this microscope stand is a lamp. The light from the lamp travels through the housing, as you can also see on this scheme here, and it's reflected up towards the sample through a number of components. Now, the function of this illumination part uh, consisting of the lamp, the field diaphragm here, and the condenser, is to both illuminate the sample in a homogeneous fashion, so every part of the sample is illuminated equally well, but is also used to determine the region of the sample that you actually want to illuminate. You don't want to illuminate more than you observe with your, in, through your eyepiece or on the camera, because Everything that you illuminate and don't observe possibly causes an increased background in the part that you do observe. It can also cause toxicity if you're working, if you're working with live samples. Now, the focus, uh, the, 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 this knob over here is used to turn the microscope lamp on or off, but it's also used to regulate the intensity of uh, the sample that's being illuminated. Uh, if we go on on the uh, microscope stand, you have the focus knob here, which contains two different gratings, uh, fine and coarse grating, um, which can be used to focus the sample in a rough manner or in a very fine manner. Um, as I said, over here is a diaphragm, so a diaphragm is basically a ring uh, that you can, where you can change the diameter. Um, um, this is used to determine the portion of the sample that's being illuminated and this is what i will illustrate now so i turn on the lamp i have a sample here on the microscope which is a small intestinal sample um, with the on off knob i can change the intensity of the lamp at the sample as you can see here at the sample but this camera has auto uh, automatic brightness killing so you don't see this here um, and now if i turn the ring that's holding the field diaphragm, at some point when the diameter of the field diaphragm is small enough, you will actually start to see the field diaphragm in the resulting image. I change the brightness of the illumination a bit to make it clear. So you can nicely see the outline of the field diaphragm on the image here. If you change the field diaphragm diameter at the microscope that you will be using later on um, and you don't see the outline of the field diaphragm it means something is wrong in the alignment of the microscope so it's very crucial to check whether you can actually see the outline of the field diaphragm in your images um, next there is the condenser just below the sample stage uh, it contains a few knobs these two knobs are used to change the position of the condenser in the lateral plane, so x, y, and this knob is used to change the height of the condenser. And you will see, you will see, when you change the height of the condenser, you will see the field diaphragm becoming sharp and unsharp. So it's crucial to use this knob here at the condenser to focus the field diaphragm with the sample. These two other knobs here can be used to move the condenser or actually to move the field diaphragm image and, and such to move um, the part of the sample that's being illuminated. Uh, so usually we center this in the field of view. This is our field of view here. Um, and then we open the field diaphragm to just beyond what we observe. Now we don't illuminate more than we actually observe. So we preserve the sample, but we also have at, as, uh, the lowest possible background in the image that we actually observe. Now, besides the illumination part on the bottom of this microscope, there's also the image formation part, which I will explain in this simple scheme here. Um, so in this scheme, the sample is positioned over here a bit further than the focal length of the objective lens uh, depicted by a by the o here this objective lens creates an image 
a real image, an image in the real space to the right side of this lens here. That's, a, that's magnified according to the, ma uh, the magnification specified on the objective lens. In the microscope, there's a second lens, the eyepiece or the eyepiece lens, uh, which is the one we look through with our eyes if we observe the sample via our eyes. And this eyepiece lens doesn't image this image that's formed by the objective lens. It doesn't image it in real space to the right side of this lens. It images it in the virtual space. So in fact, the magnification of the microscope is both the magnification by the objective lens, so here, and the magnification by the eyepiece lens in virtual space. So the total magnification is the product of these two magnifications. Our eye or our eye lens finally then images this virtual image made by the eyepiece onto our retina, giving us a final view of the sample um, uh, uh, through our eyes. Now, instead of, a, instead of our eyes, we can of course also directly place a camera here that observes the um, virtual image. Going back to, to our microscope, um, the objective lens is positioned here. This is typically part, on most, the, the large majority of microscopes, the objective lens is part of an objective revolver that you can see here and that you can turn, that contains objective lenses with different magnification. Now, magnification is not the only specification that's on an objective lens. Um, as I illustrate here, on, an, on objective lenses, there's typically a lot of, a lot of uh, interesting and useful information written. The magnification, of course, but there's also this number written here. Uh, this is called the numerical aperture. Um, this is a number between, let's say, 0 0.1 and 1.5. And the higher this number, the better the resolution of the resulting image or the sharpness of the image, if you want. There's also a lot of color codings on these objective lenses. Um, one of the color codings typically means the magnification. So it's easy to recognize the magnification just by looking at the color of that ring. And the second color coding is uh, referring often to the immersion fluid used. Many objective lenses do not need immersion liquid. They can, use, they, they can be used in air, but higher magnification, higher resolution images, they often have to be um, immersed in water or oil or other types of substances. Suppose you want to look at your sample using this light microscope. What are the steps you have to go through to obtain the best possible image? So first you mount your sample, you look through the eyepiece um, and change the focus and maybe the intensity of the lamp to make the image as sharp and as optimally illuminated as possible. Okay, I've done this now. Then we need to check whether the condenser and the field diaphragm are aligned correctly. So we simply close the field diaphragm basically as far as we can. In this case, the field, uh, the field diaphragm was positioned, uh, the condenser was positioned in the correct position, but suppose it's not, then we change the height of the condenser so the field diaphragm becomes focused. Then we change the lateral position of the condenser lens in order, in order to position the field diaphragm centered in the image, we open the field diaphragm beyond our field of view, and then we can change the position or the diameter of the condenser diaphragm um, to find an optimal balance between sharpness of the image and contrast of the image. If we open the condenser diaphragm completely, the image is as sharp as can be. This is not super clear on the camera image, but if you, if you would be able to look through the eyepiece, the image is now as sharp as it can possibly be. Um, this might reveal very fine details in your sample, but it might also hide particular details which have very low contrast. If you close the condenser diaphragm more and more, the image becomes darker, but it also becomes much higher contrast. So if I change the intensity of the lamp now and look through the eyepiece, 
I will see features that were completely hidden in the image when the condenser diaphragm was completely open. So the important take home message here is the intensity of the image you have to regulate only with the, by changing the knob that it, uh, controls the power of the lamp. The field diaphragm cannot be used to regulate intensity, the, con the condenser diaphragm also not. The field diaphragm is used only to determine that part of the, re uh, of the image that, of the sample that is being illuminated and the condenser diaphragm is used to change, to, to, to change the balance between the sharpness of the image and the contrast of the image. So never ever use these diaphragms to regulate intensity because you change the appearance of the image this way. Now this is a standard laboratory microscope. Can you use it to image all kinds of samples? No. You can only use it to image very thin samples. As you can see here, the distance between the objective lens and the sample is quite small. Um, because of the working distance of the objective lens, these high quality objective lenses, which are typically present on laboratory microscopes, they have a short, well, less than a centimeter working distance. Now, what if you have a sample that's mounted in, for example, a petri dish or a culture flask? Um, this becomes problematic because if you mount this sample on a standard laboratory microscope, you cannot image it. You might remove the lid, which is possible for some samples, but for some samples, the lid actually has to, has to remain closed. So you need another geometry to be able to image those samples. Um, and this different geometry is called the inverted microscope. Um, instead of illuminating the sample from the bottom, as in our standard microscope, we now illuminate the sample from the top. So the condenser and the field diaphragm are now on top, on, at the top of the microscope. The sample is still mounted on the um, sample stage and the objective lens and its revolver are now below the sample stage the light, the transmitted light from the sample is then still guided through the eyepiece. So you can still image as you would on a normal light microscope. So the principle is exactly the same. But now, since you illuminate from the top and since the condenser has a much higher working distance uh, than the objective lens, you can now also image thicker samples. So actually in a research setting, inverted microscopes are much more common than, than these normal upright microscopes. And um, finally, biological samples, you can often stain, as we did here. This is an H&E staining, which is typically used for uh, revealing features uh, in, in biological samples. But sometimes you cannot do an H&E staining, for example, in live samples. Then the problem is that biological tissue has super low contrast. So you need a very good microscope to reveal details in your sample. And in standard laboratory settings, often you're limited to working with a standard microscope. So that's why there's different kinds of alternatives to normal wide field microscopy that gives you low contrast. This is a simple image of a cell here. You can, in this normal image, transmission image, you can, you can reveal or you can see the, the outline of the nucleus. You can see some cytosolic organelles. You can see the outline of the cell, but that's basically all you can see. Um, even standard laboratory microscopes are often equipped by default uh, with phase contrast um, microscopy, which is a special illumination and detection principle that just reveals contrast much better than a normal image does. Uh, as you can see here in the nucleus, you now can see um, very distinct uh, uh, morphological features and also in the cytosol you can see different um, um, different kinds of gray levels corresponding to different subcellular uh, features being present. Two other types of commonly used um, alternatives to normal white cell microscopy is differential interference contrast microscopy or it's also commonly referred to as shadow imaging which reveals um, differences in refractive index or gradients in refractive index uh, uh, very well in images. And a final uh, alternative is dark field microscopy, where in pre uh, actually the background, which does not contain the sample, is actually uh, remaining dark and only the interesting features are now um, 
transmitting the light. Finally, as an alternative to transmission um, microscopy, transmission light microscopy, a much more popular uh, implementation of microscopy is so-called fluorescence imaging, where instead of just using transmitted light through the sample to image the sample, you actually uh, stain the sample with specific light emitting probes that allow you to highlight specific molecules in your sample with specific colors, as illustrated on this image here. Um, of a zebrafish fish brain stained with different kinds of fluorescent markers. 